up on a farm and always enjoyed it. I guess it's what you say, it's in your blood. There's not a whole lot better job to have than to be able to work with your family on, you know, on your own property. It's kind of a dream job. We all enjoy doing this, but it's a business. You have to be profitable at it, some capacity. Hopefully Mother Nature cooperates and it'll pay us back. You gotta be able to plan our I mean that's that's key. Maybe this is the field to hit for I, I don't know. I'm sure the hell gonna try. Every year the American corn farmers do battle, not just against unfavorable markets, mechanical challenges the weather and Mother Nature itself, but they engage in a contest against each other to see who can grow the most corn per acre. Meanwhile, at the Swanson Farm in La Harpe, Illinois. sprayed for weeds last week and it hasn't rained since so we burned off everything that was up but the chemistry we put down to hold the weeds back hasn't been activated because it hasn't rained so now we've got more weeds coming that we're not going to be able to have to spray again it was borderline almost too wet when we planted this but when it's raining every two days you gotta do what you gotta do and about the worst thing that can happen when you plant it a little too wet is for it to stop raining, which is pretty much exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah, so basically the idea behind intercropping, it's not a new system. I mean, it's been around for probably a couple thousand years at this point. But the original idea was you take three or four crops that complemented each other and you'd plant one crop and that crop would put a certain nutrient in the ground. And then you'd plant the next crop and that crop would do something different all to feed the crops behind it, essentially. Pretty good idea, really. But it's not ideal, I guess, for large scale. Uh, you're probably gonna make three trips to this field to harvest it, which obviously is not, uh, not ideal. But, but the idea, the whole idea is we shouldn't affect the soybean yield hardly at all. And the corn on the outside should be better than what it would be if it was in the middle. So we take the same amount of land, we take the same amount of fixed cost in land, and you spread it over more bushels and lower your, your cost per bushel, which obviously is the name of the game. You've got some instances where you're talking a 50, 75% increase in corn yield on the outside rows, but you get one chance to put it in and get it done right, and if you don't, then you have to live with that the rest of the year. So. There's very, very little window, very little margin for error. And it's expensive. I mean, you go and put this in with the system that we're using. I mean, you're if you're just putting seed out, you know, you're 100, 125, maybe a little less an acre. But if you're doing all the fertility that we're doing, I mean, you're pushing double that at times. And if you go in and screw it up, you either got to tear it up or live with it. So 
it's okay right now. It's not my best field, but it's not terrible. So. Yeah, we got a little equipment shuffling to do and get some stuff sprayed. I don't know. We may need to, need to do a little bit of math here and see if we need to replant some beans, I guess. Oh, my. Should have left the AC on. so warm over the winter a lot of stuff didn't get killed or got going early and you're gonna fight it all year long. It's a never ending battle. Ah, weeds out of control. You may have less of them, you may have different ones, but you're always gonna have weeds. I'm gonna try to get I gotta get some of those beans posted because we're getting the weeds are starting to come a little bit. So I've got some bunch of one and two and three inch weeds that I need to get sprayed before they get too much bigger. So there's a lot of guys my age that got back in farming when pricing was good and, and uh, are now thinking about doing something different. I'm hoping this the humidity is gonna mean it means it's gonna rain here in the next day or two. So basically this whole pallet plus the MSO. Needs to go down there and we get I'm gonna set this planter over pretty close to you. So. This is Corn Wars. Okay, I think we're ready to move. Now nothing works. So we'll be duking it out. That's right. So we're kind of down until we figure out what's going on here. I guess that's what you say it's in your blood. And I started, you know, too many Christmas when I was a child, pretty much farming. Um, at my rented my first farm when I was 13, so I've been at it a long time. This whole valley of mine down here beans and corn, and a little bit of oats, and cattle, and pasture, and all kinds of fun stuff. Competition corn and competition beans. Basically what we're mixing, we're wanting to foliar feed on some of this competition stuff. We're mixing some fertilizer and stuff together. You kind of got to do it at the proper time. That's where the rain might, might help us or hinder us. We're not sure yet. This is hose hell. There's hoses all over the place. Well, where the competition stuff's at. Oh, you'll like it better. Yeah, you'll like it better. So, I mean, it's been, it's been giddy up and going since it got out of the ground. I mean, it come up fast, and, but it's, it's way behind. The problem with it getting so much rain Earlier, you know, everything got hard then. Just to get packed down and well you've all got to keep getting some moisture to soften it up so the roots and the plants can grow. Otherwise otherwise it's like trying to grow it in a cement road, you know. That don't work very good. I put so much of a product in each one and now we're just putting water in it. It's like watching paint dry. Well, we've had trouble with a we bought a new pump. The pump wasn't performing the way it was supposed to, didn't get near the output. And then we have a computer on the system that took a crap, just like computers will. So they've put a new one of those in, but it still don't seem to be working quite right or we can't quite get it right yet. So we're gonna get some help with it tomorrow, see if we can get it going. But luckily we got that little bit of rain, so it helped us stall the irrigation a little bit. Put this in while I'm actually loading the sprayer because I've basically got kind of a generic mix in that and I'll switch between the different loads with different products. 
I mean, I got corn and bean stuff on there. This is part of a smart field camera system that will measure the stress levels in the crop on a daily basis. Well, actually, it's minute by minute. It helps you figure out what parts of the fields are under stress or moisture stress or heat stress. And this communicates with that camera on the tower up there, which is all tied into a a weather station and some other things. Hello. Yeah. Looks like we're gonna get a shower. I don't see that little itty bitty band there. That's how some of these summer showers are lots of times. It just hits a, makes a lot of noise and just hits a little area. Flex its muscles a little bit. Yeah. And that's all the irrigation valving and zones where it sends the water different places. Water goes under the road in two places here. We had a lot of struggles planting. We could only run a day or two at a time and then we'd be out for a week, sometimes two weeks. So like in May, we actually had, I think, five days we could run in May. So we didn't get done planting until the 1st of June, which is, I don't think I've ever got done that late. But at least it, it seems it's trying to play catch up now. But it's definitely behind our normal progress. Every 80 or 90 degree day, though, helps help speed things up as long as you have adequate moisture. The most thing I know about is all the flooding and wet weather and as you drive around a lot of fields look like crap. I'm not going to spray till evening because it's foliar stuff, so, um, yeah, if it don't rain. I'm just going to move some stuff around here. up when he gets that. Not available. Hello. Jake. Hey, this prefix, we can spray that when it's hot. Okay, that's what I was asking. Well, it's either going to be now, or I mean, it's either going to be in the next hour, or it's not going to be till tonight when it cools off, probably. Okay, because I can't put it, if I had put the prefix in, I'm going to have to clean it out again, so. Okay. All right, thanks. 
Jake wants to leave that prefix until it cools off because he's afraid it won't work as good. So I'll just start tonight after it cools off, I guess. And he called Philip. Man, it says 88 already. Go look at that stuff up at Dallas and find something else to do for a few hours. Good grief. Humidity is like three times higher than it was yesterday. I wasn't sweating as much yesterday, I can tell you that. Uh, it's variable. I mean, the early planted stuff looks real good. You know, later planted stuff needs a drink pretty bad. I mean, it hadn't, it hadn't rained in three weeks. Yeah, we were just soaking wet and it rained, you know, on and off for a week and a half, and then it hasn't rained since then. So, <laughs> some of that stuff that got planted in the marginal conditions because it was wet all the time is starting to look pretty tough. But it's not bad, it's just kind of variable based on what the moisture status of the area is. And the last planted corn looks pretty tough. Nothing to do about it except for wait for it to rain, right? But it could rain two inches in the next three days and you'd be running in the field the next day probably. <sighs> What's our plan B? We need to go look at a couple fields further away and it's just too hot to do any foliar work. It's too hot to do anything probably. When you say high of 90, I would expect that to be in the middle of the afternoon, not 10, 33 in the morning. So we'll just eat supper early and do two or three loads tonight after dark and do two or three loads in the morning and call it good. Well, the rain would cool it down or just cooler temperatures. I mean, all, you, all we're really looking for is the plant to be open or it's probably starting to roll now or the leaves roll up to keep moisture in and you won't not as effective that way. It's weeds or plants, either way, it needs to be basically actively growing and get to a certain temperature and time to grow. It's hot AF. Yeah, and Cobb's been doing it a little longer too. I mean, he's won it seven times. I haven't even entered it seven times, so. Maybe the flood will give me the upper edge. Well, are we ready to take our road trip? Do that and I may jump across the river and eat lunch. It is dark for this time of day. I'm gonna make myself a quick sandwich, so you don't need to film that, probably. You can kind of see the deck and how it overlooks the fields down there. It's a pretty nice spot. Now we might as well go down there. I'm still kind of betting we might be able to spray. We're only filling that, I can't remember if I told you, like to half because of um, there's a bad fuel leak. But I, if we're gonna do that, I gotta mix pretty quick. It's a good idea to shut the power off. I think I want to go load, and then. You know, I'll make the call when I get after I get loaded and decide if I want to go spray it or not. At least I'll have it loaded. Well, there's only two tall sprayers. This is one, and Haggy is one that you can spray full-grown tassel corn with and put on fungicide. Those deers can't do that. They're not, they're not tall enough putting on fertilizer and micronutrients and some plant growth regulator and some foo foo juice and some love. We're giving it some love.
calf nuts is a delicacy, you know. We had heat and rain all day, and the weather broke a little bit, and we're foliar feeding, which is better done at night. And actually, the perfect time is after uh, a little rain, so the leaf surfaces open up a little bit, and when the heat of the day is gone. So we're actually pretty much going out at a perfect time, and we got no wind, so everything is in our favor right now. You don't get perfect conditions very often. Usually you're kind of in and out of them and try to make it work and sometimes you spray in not so perfect conditions. Timing is everything also when you're getting everything on. Oh, I prefer the going, yes. I don't like to wait. I'm not a patient man. Ask anybody. <laughs> Yeah, this is a competition no-till field that I um, thought we'd try no-till this year. Come along pretty good. And we're going to give it a little boost, you might say, with some more product. Still hoping for a weather rally like everybody is. They're calling for a pretty hot summer, so if the rain shuts off in certain areas, it'll make a difference. But it seemed like Illinois got a lot of rain today. But what we saw on the radar. Oh yeah, it's not really the nature of a farmer to give up though. I mean, I got pretty good chances for the state of Illinois, I think. I know corn, and as far as even and fast growing, this is pretty darn good. Driving around trying to decide what we're going to do. Spend the afternoon talking on the phone trying to get together. And then about 5 o'clock, I actually get something done. Call it a Todd Hoffman. You know where he's always running around throwing stuff? Same freaking lot. this morning. It was like 86. I'm like, oh, I should have time to spray one load by the time I got everything done. It's like 89. I'm like, yep. Not supposed to rain till 5, right? Well, if we get the foliar work done and Praxor, I knew that wasn't going to fly. I thought maybe the prefix would go, but Jake didn't want to do it either, so clouds, rain, ordered up. I think about an inch. Yeah, the next 40 days we're going to start, uh, we'll be doing repetitive applications of nitrogen, sulfur, and potassium. Uh, it'll be a lot of stress management if it stays as hot as it is right now. So we'll probably be in the field almost every day, um, if not every day, if it's not raining. So. But other than that, sit and wait, do some crop protection. Tighten up a couple gaskets and we'll be ready to fold it up and load it up, I guess. Yeah, so the foliar tonight, we used uh, four Genesis Ag products. We used uh, Century, we used Carbos, uh, we used EXP, and we used Silicate. And then we also used uh, Preaxor fungi fungicide from BSF Ag products. And 30 some gallons of water.
looked at all of the contest corn. We looked at the intercrop field today. Everything is progressing nicely from where it was last week, so we're in good shape there. And the contest corn looks phenomenal. I mean, as far as corn wars go, y'all better watch out because it's coming. It's coming. So I'm excited about that because it looks really, really good. Rother, I'm coming for you. I'm gonna spank you, badly. Just watch out.